changing the strings on a Fender Squire guitar. Something to be aware of before you start changing the strings on your Telecaster is the fact that there are many styles of bridges. However, for the sake of changing strings there are two main differences to look out for. At the bridge, the guitar can either be strung over the body or through the body. As the name suggests, with the through body style, the string actually passes from the back of the guitar through to the front. In this video, we'll be dealing with an over the body strung Telecaster. To do this job, you'll need wire cutters and a set of strings. Today we're going to restring this Telecaster. You can see here the top E string's broken, uh, but we'll replace all the strings on this. It's a fairly easy uh, guitar to restring, uh, as all the strings are anchored at these points here along the base where you literally just pull them through the hole. So the first thing we'll do is remove all the strings and to do this I'm going to do it the quick way. It looks a bit brutal but it makes a lot of difference if you're in a hurry or you do many guitars a day. So the first thing we need to do then after we've cut the strings is just remove the ends of the strings from here. Now you may wonder why I'm doing all of the strings at once apart from speed. I also want to give this guitar a deep clean because uh, it's quite manky. Got a stuck one there. The way to deal with a stuck one is we get a broken string like this, one of the ones we cut, and we stick it through the nipple at the end, like so. And this gives us the leverage we need to just give that a tug. There we go. And whoopsie. It's being a real bugger this one. There we go. Out it comes. That was a, a pain in the neck one, but we got it in the end. Once we've moved the strings from the tailpiece here, we can slide the guitar across so I can bring it into the camera view and clean them off the machine heads so they just need to be unraveled and in this case well always binned it's always wise to watch the end of the strings because uh, they're really sharp and you can actually scratch your guitar quite badly if you're uh, not very careful with it or you could even hurt yourself or any animals you have around the place keep them out of the way there we go so we've got the big pile of old strings i'm going to get rid of those now and then i'm going to clean it before we proceed with the next stage well i've cleaned the guitar up uh, i just use normal furniture polish this is some cheap stuff i got from aldi does the job fine uh, it could be a bit awkward because it's got wax in it which uh, it means it leaves streaks and it's more difficult to polish out but it waterproofs the guitar and it does protect it uh, but you know finger marks it's always a pain in the neck on a guitar this time which is unusual for me I actually used a commercial product uh, for cleaning the, the fretboard uh, this is just cause it was with a guitar I bought recently and this is Gibson Luthier's Choice Professional Quality Fretboard Conditioner uh, I'm always dubious of these things because I think you're just paying more money for something you can get in a, a different bottle. Uh, and I'm actually surprised that the, the maple fingerboard on this thing has come up really nicely. Uh, you know, it was starting to look a bit darker in places and grubby and it's cleaned it up nicely. So that, that's really good stuff. Uh, I don't know how much it is. I'll have to have a look on uh, eBay or wherever. But that's uh, that, that's really cleaned it up. Good style. I've just squished it everywhere. You can see, it even puts a slight shine on it. It's really nice. So yeah, that's well worth it, an investment, providing it's not too silly, really, really, really expensive. Uh, this is a working guitar. It's one I uh, let my students use, the students who come straight after school and can't be bothered bringing their own guitar or whatever. Uh, so I'm putting Elixir strings on this time. Uh, I usually use uh, cheap and cheerful strings because if you change them frequently enough, it doesn't make any difference. However, some people have particularly acidy, I would assume, fingers. 
and certain people cause strings to rot really quickly. It sounds strange, I know, but it's true. Uh, and because this guitar I let my students use, so it's a, a working guitar, I'm going to actually put these elixirs on. They are more expensive, but they're coated with a special anti-rust coating, and it really does make a difference. If you're one of these people who do, does have, you'll know who you are, your, your, your strings will go gammy in no time at all. These are well worth the investment. They, they could cost twice, three, four times more than a normal set of strings, but they last at least four times longer than a normal set of strings, particularly with people with gammy fingers. So this is what we're using today, the elixirs on this, uh, on this Telecaster. It's worth mentioning, it's quite important to make sure your strings are in the correct order. If you're, change, if you're doing your guitar and you're trying to do it quickly or you're just not concentrating, you could easily mess up and put the strings on in the wrong order. Uh, the, the numbers here are the, the size of the strings, the thickness that is. Um, so the smaller, 009, is the top E string, the thin E, and then it works its way to the thickest E string. In this case, it, it's 46, 046, uh, which I find is quite nice to get a bit of a, a, a richer bass. Uh, so you, you'd sort them out, put them in order, thin, slightly thicker, slightly thicker, slightly thicker, slightly thicker until you get to the bottom string. And then as you do them, you won't put them on in the wrong order. So, Right, we'll start with the nine string. So the nine is the top E string, the thin E string. Uh, so here it is. You can see here, this end, we have what's called the nipple, this little ball here. And this is the last thing to go through the guitar. So you start with the blank end, this pointy end, and we push it through the hole at the back of the tailpiece here. Now pull this through. Now you have to make sure it goes through this gap here. It has to come through this hole. So this can be the awkward bit to, to get it to go up there. So to make that do that, what I'm gonna do is to help me slightly bend the string and this will help you can then rotate it and lift it and there we go straight through and now I can pull that through and then when we get to the end the nipple will stop there and that's fitted at that end we then would draw the string down the guitar or up the guitar whichever way you put it until we get to the headstock and here you can see we just want it to go over the nut, hold it in place, under the string tree and around the ferrule at the end. So let's show you that again close up, through the nut, appropriate slot the end one there, under the string tree, around the ferrule, doing it twice here and then Get through that hole wherever it is. Can't make out what direction it's in. Oh, there it is. There we go. One disadvantage of this lighting is it makes very dark shadows. There we go. So that's wound on, and you'll notice it's going around this way. Get that into the frame. It's going around this way, and they'd all follow the same pattern. So I'll tighten that up a little. There we go, just leave it loose for the moment, then we'll tune them all up at the end. Right, we've done the top E string, so we move down now to the B string. The B string is the 11, and you can't see it there, can you? There we go, it's the 11, so we get that out. Same process as before, so we just repeat the process. We unravel the string, the nipple has got to go to this end, so we want the pointy side first. Uh, bend the string slightly, so it will come through the tailpiece more easily and then we find the hole and put it in there uh, there we go again once we've got it through the hole we've got it here once we've got this through here we just pull it through 
all the way until the nipple puts up against the end and then we've got the second string in place, the B string and we do the same as before we edge it along to the edge of the neck bring it down the neck and then line it up as before, once we've got the, the string up coming all the way to the end here we, we bring it over the, the nut in the appropriate slot this one goes under the string tree again and then round the ferrule same direction uh, in this case it's anti-clockwise it's going around there we go I'm taking it round one good wind and then through the hole as I said earlier it doesn't matter if it's one wind two winds three winds uh, but half a wind is not a good idea uh, or a very short because one it'll slip and two you end up with all the force of the string resting on the edge of the hole uh, which can be quite sharp and cut through the string uh, so you can either have the guitar going out of tune or the string actually breaking either way it's not good there we go that's a bit of an awkward one and give it a tug one disadvantage of this fret cleaner is it makes your fingers oily so the strings actually slip through your fingers it's a real pain there next one done and I'll just tune that up slightly and we'll move on to the next one right we've done the 9 and 11 we're now up to the next string which is the 16 uh, This is the G string, and the usual thing is uh, unravel it. So we have the nipple this end. Uh, we need to bend it slightly, so otherwise it will be awkward here. Though it's going to be awkward here anyway. This is uh, not the easiest guitar to string from this point of view. It, it's just a bit fidgety. Now push that in, and. and voila there we go and it is pull the thing straight the way through till the nipple locks tight at the end we got the g-string ready to be done on the other end so we'll slide to the other end yeah once more and here we are at this end get that in shot for you there we go and you can see the G through there. Now on, on this guitar you'll notice the string tree only does the top two. This is the string tree here and it's just got the E string and the B string in it. But all the rest of the strings don't need to go through that so that actually makes life easier. So we've just got it going straight through to the ferrule and round in the same direction again. Get that string out of the way so you can see what we're doing. Uh, and it's going to go around the same way again anti-clockwise thus I'm taking it around once this one and then back through the hole that a tug there we go and that one's done and then make sure that's back in the nut it's come out there there we go so the three have lined up in the nut so far so good I'll do the last three then and we'll tune it up so once it's done you can see all the nipples are here in place through the end of the guitar uh, and the strings are then running down across the rest of the guitar. Actually, I'm going to clean these up just for a moment to make things easier to see. Uh, if I just cut them down to two inches until I've tuned it and stuff, just in case they slip, you can cut it down really short once you've tuned it a couple of times. Uh, but it is possible for the strings to slip on the ferrule and this can be a, a bit awkward if you cut it too short because you'll then have to restring it but get a new string it won't be long enough right that needs to be pushed back under the string tree so you see the E string and the B string top two going under the string tree these others don't need to go through the string tree they're all going around the same way this is important I have to keep stressing this everything's going through its proper 
appropriate place in the nut so that we can actually start tuning it now. It's actually going through this here, but because it's easier to see, I'm going to take it through the Behringer today so you can see it getting in tune. So we'll start on the bottom A string. through that again. Yeah. 